So we haven't looked into PhysX since like 2011, and for some pretty good reasons actually, but we'll get into that later. Looking back at the last PhysX video we released, we noticed quite the demand in the comment section for a modern follow-up, so we'll do that and try a bunch of different scenarios and add some more information to the pool. Intel's Skull Canyon Nook features a 6th generation Core i7 processor and Thunderbolt 3. You can learn more at the link in the video description. So a few different questions will be raised and hopefully answered in this video. We're going to look at the full range of current 1000 series NVIDIA Pascal GPUs and how they perform while running alongside a PhysX focused lower end GPU. We're going to try to find what is the best bang for your buck in, if you're shopping for a PhysX card, and we're going to try to figure out roughly if it's worth it to add your old card to your new system as a PhysX GPU, or if you should just sell it. Then last but not least, we'll all just have some fun with some ludicrous setups like 1080 with the 1080 PhysX card, and that's insane, so why not? In order to test all of these scenarios, we needed some games. Our chosen games were Assassin's Creed Black Flag, Metro Last Light, Fallout 4, and Batman Arkham Knight, one of the most controversial releases of recent years. So right away, with Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Fallout 4, it just seems that having a PhysX card really doesn't do anything. But Metro Last Light does show relatively minor increases across the board, and then BOOM! Holy benchmarks, Batman, out of nowhere, like a thug in a dark alley. Maybe too soon, it's been a while. The Batman benchmarks did show significant improvements with a dedicated PhysX card, and yeah, let's dive deeper. We'll start with the GTX 1060. We first paired it with the GT730. Now the GT730 is a really shit card. If you're wondering why, check out this video. When paired with this shitty card, it lost five frames per second on average, rough. When moving up to the 750Ti, however, we saw an overall improvement of about 2.5 FPS. Not a huge gain, but it's something to work with. Stepping up a little bit to the 1070, we saw a similar story, but to more extremes. With the 1030 as a PhysX card, we saw a loss of 11 FPS. Then with the 750, we saw a gain of 5 FPS, so cool. Again, when looking at the 1080, we saw extremes. Paired with the 730, it dropped almost 16 FPS. With the 750, it gained just over 5 FPS, and going up from there, we seem to max out at a gain of about 6 to 7, even when the dedicated card was just another 1080, which is crazy. Whoa! Okay, so one of the cool things here is all of the particle effects that are just everywhere. The smoke, the little sparks, there's a bunch of different stuff in this scene, and that's why this game benefits so much from PhysX. But as you can see right now, it's choppy. It doesn't feel very good, and that's because we're running with the GTX 730. If you check out in the bottom corner here, you can see the utilization of both GPUs. The 730 is doing a lot of work, but the 1080 is barely working at all. The 1080 is GPU 1, the 730 is GPU 2. Now with the 750Ti, you can see it's much more smooth. The particle effects are all running fine, it's not choppy anymore, all that kind of good stuff. And again, we come down to the corner, you can see that the utilization of the first card is not being hampered at all. It's able to go full bore all the time, which is why everything's much more smooth. The physics card is able to operate on its own and do everything it needs to while not hampering the actual normal GPU. And with that, the sales of GTX 750 Ti's and 760's go through the freaking roof! NVIDIA mails us a check for one billion dollars. We buy 12 new office buildings, each for one of Linus's Lambos, and troll away into the night. Not so fast, little Lambo Linus, not so fast. There are like an embarrassingly low amount of games that support PhysX, and not that many coming around the corner that will either. A hard sell for someone that could just flip their old graphics card for more lunch money or avoid buying a physics card altogether. So in the end, the answer is, it's just not worth it. Unless you really, really like Batman games or for some other very intensely physics title, and there really aren't many of them, so good luck.
If you like this video, like it and get subscribed. If you dislike this video and you're like, dude, don't make a thugs in an alley joke about Batman, that's just rude. Dislike it. Uh, if you want a shirt or any of the things that you saw us use, like graphics cards in this video, you can check the links in the video description below, including to Amazon. If you want to see another video that we've released, check out this one on uh, why SLI is crazy right now. Like, what the hell is going on with SLI? Because it's, it's nuts. DirectX 12, poof, who knows?